Hello everyone, this is The Mind That Writes, welcome to Post Poetry, where I take a more of an in-depth look at some of my poems. The one that uh, we'll be looking at today is The Sight Merchant, and to make it a bit easier, I will talk about the idea behind the title, the first stanza, well, the, the introduction, and then the end of the poem. The Sight Merchant originally started out as the idea of Peddler, and I wasn't I've been thinking on the poem for for about a week or so and I didn't quite like that, that title and I was uh, I was looking for a way to express my views on how certain ideas are peddled given in the like, they're given almost as if uh, traded on the black market so to speak peddler so I ended up looking at the word idea and according to um, our good friend uh, Google Apparently the word idea has its roots in Greek, idein, which means to see. So in order to see you need sight. And because I didn't like the word peddler, well, not necessarily, I didn't think that the idea of peddler is a good way to express what I was trying to say, I transformed it into the sight merchant <clears throat> in my mind when I started writing the poem it was something along the lines of uh, you're walking around in a market and there's a merchant who draws your attention and he's like hey psst, come here I have some sight to sell. Hey, come here. I have I have some ideas to sell you. Anything you ever wanted, desired, thought of. All here in plain sight. All here as simple ideas. You might want to check it out. Then the, I say, I'll have some. The merchant replies, best of luck, my friend. In order to save the uh, time, I will leave out the, the, the middle part, the poem itself, so to speak, and I will talk a bit about the ending. <clears throat> The ending goes as such, it's five words, thought, knowledge, light, reality, and abstr abstract. I was looking at these words because in, in the poem I describe all of them. And I, I talk about how in the absence of thought, this happens, absence of knowledge, something else, absence of light, absence of reality, and in the absence of the abstract, things that happen. So I was looking at the words more carefully, and then I noticed that thought, uh, if you lose the, the, the first T and the H, you get ought, knowledge, you 
use the no you you lose the no and you you are uh, left with ledge light you you lose the g and h you have lit now for as for reality uh, i'm not sure where it is Hmm, I may have left it out. Either way, the abstract you can uh, get act from it as well. So the ending goes like this: thought, knowledge, light, reality, abstract. I ought to look over the ledge, see the sun being lit into a ball of fire. Act according to the pulse within a beat, a rhythm that roots me into the ground, reaching, expanding towards the high beyond. I ought to look over the ledge. The sight merchant sells me sight, then I ought to look with my eyes, thought, ought over the ledge over the ledge of knowledge see the sun being lit into a ball of fire light as we know comes from the sun and lit into a ball of fire well there you have it act according to the pulse within a beat act abstract act according to the pulse within a beat there's a beat and there's the pulse within it a rhythm that roots me into the ground so beat it's like a beat but the beat has a rhythm which roots me into the ground and from there this rhythm or I or my sight or how I see things I'm reaching expanding towards the high beyond so to speak like back there hmm. as for the reality part uh, it got uh, I think it got it, there's the Reality is set in the background. So you see the sun being lit into a ball of fire and reality the reality in the background makes you act according to the pulse within a beat. That's how I visualized it at the time of, of writing. So yeah, I think that's about it. I hope you liked it and as always i'm curious about uh, the way you interpreted the poem or if uh, your interpretation is significant significantly more different than mine anyhow have a wonderful day see you next time